I can't believe I'm saying this, but we are two months away from the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer being a year old. <laughs> Damn, cuh, wasn't that thing yesterday? But that just means we are that much closer to the next trailer. Some believe we'll actually see a release this winter. Since Nintendo doesn't have much planned for the holiday season, as far as we know. So before we potentially get a slew of information this summer, please, I wanted to list my five biggest hopes for her Breath of the Wild 2. What's up my homies? It's Edible Incredible. So let's get right into it. My number five is a super general one before we get into more specific hopes. And it's simply to be able to maintain the hotness that Breath of the Wild started. What I mean by this is all the nuances that Breath of the Wild excelled at. Like of course the open world feel, the new aged puzzle mechanics, the ability to climb and jump off mountains, the wide ranging arsenal of awesome outfits, shields, bows, and weapons, and one of my favorite staples of the game, the sexy arrow time. With a lot of these things, they could not just reuse them, but add more layers to, or craft them into an even better system. For example, the new weapon system. I actually prefer the whole breaking of weapons, especially if the same amount of weapons are at our disposal. It encourages us to always be aware of what we decide to pick up and drop. Every encounter has meaning since we can't just run around with the Master Sword forever. However, this system definitely has room for improvement. Same for the whole climbing system, we really need some type of unlockable gloves or something that prevents the ridiculous rain slip cheese. So we know Breath of the Wild 2 is going to reuse a lot of these mechanics. My first hope is that they choose to keep the things that made Breath of the Wild so great. Next, coming in at number 4 is the possibility of Zelda being playable. And not just playable, but in a co-op setting. Now I know this sounds pretty far-fetched, but Anuma has been wanting to implement multiplayer in a 3D Zelda environment for years now. It doesn't necessarily have to be a required part of the game, but instead merely optional. She could only be playable in certain scenarios, like what that one rumor said how she'd be playable in dungeons, or alongside her throughout the entirety of the quest. This way Nintendo doesn't have to force us to play with her, but instead just get our feet wet in witnessing how it'll function. A playable Zelda has been hinted at, rumored upon, and discussed rather frequently, ever since the trailer showed her exploring and aiding in Link's new adventure. Of course, who knows if this portion of gameplay slash cutscenes is just an introduction to the game, or really portraying what the majority of the game will look and feel like, with specifically Zelda constantly being at Link's side, as a new age companion you could say. Breath of the Wild is known for its expansive and coherent world. Even though this Hyrule was on the verge of complete annihilation, it felt like the most realistic iteration of this land we've ever seen. There were just enough towns and settlements to keep the interactions interesting. For an apocalyptic world, but in the next installment, I'd love to see Hyrule, as Zelda put it, restored to its former glory. Or at least somewhat. Like what a majority of fans crave, a bustling castle town once again. Hyrule Castle in Breath of the Wild was by far the greatest the series has ever produced. But seeing something just as grand but full of life would be one hell of a treat, particularly with its addition of intriguing characters and their own stories that only supply the world with more side quests. Something Nintendo didn't completely foresee Breath of the Wild being praised for was its glitchy side that opened doors for speedrunners to drool over. The first thing that comes to mind is the flying minecart glitch, one of the most ridiculously awesome yet unorthodox ways to travel in the game. Of course later on we got a friggin motorcycle, but I highly doubt they'll just hand us the bike to start Breath of the Wild 2. It feels more so like it'll go down as a DLC exclusive thing. However, since fans took advantage of the physics to create an awkward flying machine, I wouldn't be surprised if they implemented their own new way of travel. We had the Lothwing in Skyward Sword, then a bike in Breath of the Wild, so what could be next? Since Anuma wants to maintain this new open air feel, I'd love to see more life to these landscapes, as well as a fresh badass way of getting around. So overall, my third hope revolves around fleshing out the overworld and adding a fresh way of traveling. My next hope is something I did a whole video about. The likelihood we get a voice actor for our boy, the Gerudo King Ganondorf. If the trailer is truly a great representation of what we'll get, 
A backstory to why he's decrepit and sealed beneath the ground should make way for plenty of dialogue opportunities for the old king of evil. If that ends up being the case, I don't know how they couldn't have a voice for him in a game that mainly focuses on his story. I believe the only way we don't get Ganon voiced is if he ends up having just a few lines. But again, that doesn't appear to be the case. Hearing a voice, especially one that fits him, is something I've hoped for going into Breath of the Wild. He's my favorite video game villain and right up there with one of my favorites of all time. His old voice actor brings his grunts and laughs to life so well. Let's hope the new one will at least excel in those aspects. And for my number one, what I'd want most of all is one hell of a captivating story. Breath of the Wild's tale wasn't bad by any means, but I was left with wanting more. Skyward Sword, on the other hand, was almost completely centered around its story. With fans wanting more of a non-linear approach, they crafted Breath of the Wild. Obviously, its sequel will be a lot more story-driven by just watching the trailer alone, but how much much will it delve into its lore is the question. Leading up to Breath of the Wild, the majority of us thought we'd get a definitive answer to where it lies on the timeline. But things just got more complicated upon release. Aside from an engrossing narrative as a whole, I'd of course love to see Breath of the Wild, along with its sequel, get a proper official location on Zelda's chronology. I know we've got a listing as Breath of the Wild taking place after everything else, but I believe we still need an in-game verification on how the timelines merged, or whether it actually does reside on a specific one, or on its own branch of history. Yes, this website's listing is in fact official, but the details are still completely unknown. They could distinguish it to one timeline and it wouldn't hurt this website's previous claim. Since and specifically Breath of the Wild is separated with a line, and all the other Zelda games are connected with a line. Just because it's at the end doesn't necessarily mean it's submerged. Because it's the only one that's literally not connected, they could still do whatever they want. All we know for a fact is that it takes place at the end of something. But that's just how I perceive the website's diagram. Aside from the glorious timeline debate, and how bad most of us want it settled for good, a enriching tale that makes us even feel for Ganon's position in all this, like how the Wind Waker did it, would be amazing. So let me know what you hope Breath of the Wild 2 achieves the most. And as always, I hope you all stay hyped. Peace!